We make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh Lord, oh, we make miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who Oh yeah, we make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Wherever you are, let's sing it together, come on. You're a way maker, that's who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Hey, welcome to Bible study. The scriptures, 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. It says, So we have no reason to despair, despite the fact that our outer humanity is falling apart and decaying. Our inner humanity is breathing in new life every single day. You see, the short lived pains of the life are creating for us an eternal glory. It does not compare to anything that we know here. Verse 18 says, So we do not set our sights on the things that we can see with our eyes. All of this is fleeting. It will eventually fade away. Instead, we focus on the things that we cannot see, which live on and on. You know, God is working behind the scenes. That's our message. God is working behind the scenes. You know, if there's anything that I've learned to be true in life is that the real work happens behind the scenes. You know, I'm on television every week now, and people ask me the question, how does this all come together? How do you know what to say and, and what guests to call on the show? And how do you pick? How do you pick out what, you've gonna, what you're going to wear or, or what you're going to do? And my answer that, to that question usually is summed up this way. It all happens behind the scenes. And that's what I want you to know, and I think that's how life is. You know, I truly believe that God is working throughout all that we see is going on today. I believe God's still moving. He's still breathing. He's still doing some things. And if there's anything I've learned in my years working as a pastor, it is that things don't always go the way that we think they should go. They don't. And that's just the truth about life. You know, I've seen so much go wrong when I, when I thought it was going to go right. I've seen folk live. I've seen some folk die. I've seen families broken apart. I've seen justice and I've seen injustice. I've seen many things. I've seen tragedy. I felt pain even myself, and I've learned in over 15 years of ministry that life is hard, but I believe, as the Bible suggests, that God allows us to experience things in order to show the world how powerful he is, but also how good God still is in spite of what we go through. That's the message. God is still good in spite of what we go through. And what do I mean by that? The question is asked. Well, I want to convey that people are watching how we react as Christians to the challenges of life. They want to see, is your faith still strong? Do you really practice what you preach? When, I, when a loved one dies or a relationship crumbles or a friend abandons us or a prayer is not answered, the world is still watching us. And that is what Paul was saying to the church in this text. The Corinthian church is who we're talking about right now. And Paul was talking to them and he said, in the face of our everyday realities, we all have a few choices as to how we will respond when we're disappointed. How we'll react when the challenges come. We can shake our fist at God and, and lose faith in him because he didn't stop the bad thing from happening. That's one thing that we could do. Or number two, what we could do is we could spout out religious sound and cliches which mask our confusion and our pain. We can do that. Number three, we could also simply quietly withdraw and slowly watch our faith diminish. Or number four, we can acknowledge the pain that we're in and yet keep on working for God's kingdom and keep the faith. I want to tell you today that the fourth option is the one that you need to take right now is to keep the faith. Don't let anything stray you away. See, somebody needs to say this. Yes, I'm disappointed, but no matter what I'm going through, I'm not going to turn my back on God and I'm not going to let it change my identity because we are still sons and daughters of the King of Kings and of the Lord of Lords. In spite of it all, I want to say God is still good. 
He's still at the throne and he will never put more on me than he than I can bear. He's going to lift up those things that are heavy on my back and he's going to take care of it at the appointed time. And so the point for today is that all of us can find renewed hope in times of dis disappointment by understanding that he's working behind the scenes. But he also needs to do a few things and we've got to do a few things ourselves that are found in the word of God. We've got to, first of all, we have to do this. Remember this. We've got to focus on eternal things. That's the 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16 through 18 text. Focusing on eternal things. Paul says this, don't give up. Trouble won't last forever. They are serving a purpose that you may not understand today. But they will have significance on tomorrow. That's what he's saying. Don't focus on the problem. Focus on the problem solver. Focus on Jesus right now. You know, there's a tendency when things don't go our way to feel like this crisis or this circumstance will never change. But know this, if anybody's ever been in a situation where it felt like this, where it felt like things would never change or that it's much bigger than it is, I'm never going to stop feeling sick. You may say, I'm never going to be able to get the money that I need. This family situation is never going to change. It's never going to be over. Folk are always going to be in my life forever. I'm always going to have to deal with this. Sometimes we get that in our mind, but that is not true. See, it's normal to feel like your circumstance is never going to change. But the Bible gives us hope and tries to teach us a different way of seeing things, a different perspective. It's not about what you see. It's about the way in which you see it. It's all about your perspective. That's what it's all about. For example, as a parent, I see my kids often getting upset at things that I, that I know in just a few moments, it's not going to matter anymore. I'm just a few, in just a few moments, it'll be a thing of the past. However, in the moment, they get bent out of shape. They tend to feel rough. They feel like it's bad. It's never going to stop. But as a parent, I know, I know from experience, also from dealing with it myself and from dealing with them, that they will forget about it completely and move on. Maybe it's an hour, maybe it's a day, sometimes even a few minutes. They will get through it and they will get over it. But as a child, they just can't see that themselves because they haven't matured yet. And see, they can't see what me as their father can see because I know more, I've been through more. And most of the challenges I know how to get through. And I've seen them also get over it themselves in the past. And see, that's just like God. We get all worked up about things that happen to us. We get all worked up about our challenges. When God is like this, that's not gonna ever last as long as you think. That's what he's saying. This is another thing that's going to be a thing of the past in your life. That's what God is saying. God is saying this. I'm going to get you through this. But right now, just like a child, we can't understand or we can't see what the father knows or what the father sees. And sometimes you simply just got to trust these troubles that they won't last always. That's what being spiritually mature is all about. It's about standing on the promises of God. One of them being is that he will never leave you nor forsake you. One of them being that he will comfort you in times of trouble. Paul said, everything we encounter in this life, our mortal life, our temporary life is, life is light and momentary in the face of eternity. It's really light work. So when your prayers aren't answered right away, you got to realize that you've got time. And Paul in this text is not trying to invalidate the pain that we feel in the moment. He's not saying that it's not going to hurt, but he's showing, a, showing us this, how to soothe the pain and the healing balm of life. And it really centers around the fact that God is still on the throne. You know what? I'm going to stop right there, standing on the promises of God. Michael, thanks for sitting in on me. This is my son, Mike. He wanted to send in on my message. And so what does standing on the promises of God mean to you? It really means like following Jesus and being a good Christian. And that's what it's all about. So let's just pray for a moment before we go. Heavenly Father, we just thank you that we can stand on your promises. We thank you that even though we go through rough times, that you will bless us and still watch over us. Thank you for those that are watching right now. Be with them. Touch their life. And we just thank you for your love that's unending. And we thank you for your grace that's sufficient. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, I hope that you enjoyed me and Michael sitting here talking to you and just hope you'll be blessed for the rest of the week. Take care and God bless. Blessing from you, blessing from you. Blessing from you, blessing from you. I am blessed.
yes. Come on, lift that praise to the Lord and declare the blessings of the Lord over your children, your sons and your daughters, over your relationship, over your finances, over this pandemic. Come on, speak to the Lord. Let him hear your heart today. A blessing from you. That's what we need, God. That's what we need, God. So we lift our hands. We lift our heart to you, Jesus. We declare today we need a blessing. Hallelujah. My hands are lifted up. Come on. My hands are lifted up. And my heart is ready to. My heart is ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Yes, sir. That is what we need today, Father. We make our request. A blessing from you. Just one more time, I'll leave you alone. My hands are lifted. My hands are lifted. Yeah. And my heart is ready to. My heart is Thank you, Jamel. Ready to oh, my God, I'm blessing from you. I'm blessing from you. Hallelujah to Jesus.